Lindsay Allison and this is Crazy Felix and you're watching Paula McClay by Deck. Everybody, I'm Debbie Allison with Devin Company and I'm here today with Crazy Felix and we are going to show you how to bake this polymer clay rabbit. First thing I'm going to do is go through the materials list with you so you know what you'll need. Um, we have got white polymer clay. I've got um, one little ball for his chin, two balls for his cheeks. We've got his ears, his arms, his legs, his body, and his head. We've got some pale or um, pastel pink. These are going to be for his nose and the pads of his feet. We've got a piece of clay that's been rolled out pretty thin on about a setting of a five which will go over his belly. I've got orange for his carrot and I'm using this green for his um, for the green part of his carrot. Even though I've used a darker color on this I don't like it as well so I'm going to go with this color this time. We also need a tile and the tile is so that we can uh, set the rabbit on. We're actually going to be forming the rabbit on the tile and baking it in the oven on this tile. Then as far as tools go, I've got a double-ended needle tool, an X-Acto knife, a double-ended stylus. I'm not sure what this is. Um, I use this to make my ears with and you can actually use the end of a paintbrush to do the same thing that I'm going to do with this tool. A um, couple of toothpicks, We've got some fishing line for his whiskers. I don't know that they actually, if you can see his whiskers, but they're made with fishing line. We've got four millimeter black beads, which we will use for his eyes, scissors to cut the whiskers, and a garlic press so that we can make the, um, the green part of his carrot. And now that we've got all of our materials ready, I guess we're ready to get started and make this rabbit. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is start with our body. So I've kind of pre-rolled the balls out a little bit be so to save some time. And you just take your ball and you're going to shape it kind of like an egg. And then set it on your clay. Push down a little bit. Want to give him sort of a little belly if you can see. We're making a little belly on him. Then I'm going to take my pink and actually it should be a little thinner than I've rolled it out but and we're just going to kind of cut a bit of an egg shape here I'm doing an upside down egg and this will go on his belly like so and this is a little brighter pink than what I used on uh, that rabbit because I think it shows up a little better. Now the next thing we're going to do are his legs and I've rolled out two kind of, these are about one inch pieces, maybe three quarter to one inch in diameter and I'm going to make these as his bottom paws. I rolled them out into a cylinder and then I'm bending a piece up for his paw like so. We'll do that with both of them. Two cylinders. Bend it up. And then we're going to attach it to the rabbit. Like so. Then I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to push down to make, I guess you could say like claws in his paws. <laughs> claws in his paws. Alright. They are a little uneven, but it won't really matter for this. Okay, now I'm going to take my... Um, Looks like I lost one of my big pieces of pink. Alright, I've been taking two, two pink balls that will go for the pads of his feet. I have to make another one since I lost one. There it is. 
and we press these on the bottoms of his feet and then we're going to make the pink pieces that go up near his claws or toes press them on like so now I've exaggerated these a little bit for the video because it's kind of hard to see um, something really small with the camera so he's going to get three toes Now you could actually make a bear like this, just change the color, and this could be a bear if you made him black or brown. Alright, so there's his feet. Now we're going to do his head. And what I normally do is take a toothpick and break it in half and insert it in the body. And this, what this is going to do is give us some support for his head. When it's done, it'll just... Uh, keep his head from falling off for any reason. Now I've taken the ball for his head and it's round and what I'm going to do is I'm going to shape it a little bit um, kind of like a triangle I guess if you can see that and that's going to be the shape of his head and I'm going to put it on top and just over the top of that toothpick. So there's his head. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, put his face on. I've taken two pieces of clay that I've rolled out into little round balls. These are going to be his cheeks. And we just put his cheeks on. Whoops. Like so. And then... Um, we need a little ball of clay for his chin and we insert that right down here for his chin and then we have a round pink ball of clay that we'll utilize for his nose and just press that on there. You can see that he's starting to come to life now. The next thing we're going to do are his eyes, and I'm using 4 millimeter black beads. Some people will use clay that's already baked, but I like to use the beads um, primarily because of just the consistency and the size. These are 4 millimeter. I usually use 3 or 4 millimeters. Now I'm going to insert these on the end of my needle and right above his cheek and press in like so and pull down and now we'll do the other side now normally the best way to get these even believe it or not is to do it upside down the second one so that's what I'm doing now and press in a little bit and you can see his personality just kind of coming to life there now we'll take our needle and we'll do two eyebrows on him just by pressing in okay and then we're going to do uh, use our needle and put some holes in his uh, muzzle just stick you know about four or five holes in the muzzle now you don't need to do this, it just adds a little bit of detail to him. Now I think I need to push this eye in a little bit because it looks a little larger than the other one. There we go. Alright, now I'm going to make the ears. And I'm taking two balls of clay and I'm going to just kind of roll them out into a long shape with a point on the end for his ears like so and I'm taking this tool that I don't know the name of now you can use an end of a paintbrush and it'll do the same thing pushing down in the ears like so 
and then kind of pulling out at the bottom. And you can see that's making the indention for your ears. Now I'm going to take some pink clay and just roll a little piece of pink clay to insert inside. It's not quite large enough of the ear to give it that that pink inside the ear. I think this is probably going to be the fastest rabbit I ever made. <laughs> uh, believe it or not, sometimes it can take me up to four hours to uh, to do one single ornament. I've actually got one that I'm probably going to share with you all that took me three days. And it was an Easter ornament, but it took me three days to make that ornament. All right, as you can see now, we've got our ears with the pink inside of them. And now we're going to put them on and just kind of push it on there. Now, sometimes it helps if you take a piece of wire and insert that inside of there, and I didn't think about that. Um, but a piece of wire inserted right in the head and into the ear sometimes can add a support. Sometimes a, a dab of glue will help. Okay, so now I've got his ears pressed on, and this one I think we're going to bend down just to make it look a little floppy. And I think I'll tilt his head a little. That gives him a little more character. Now we're going to uh, do his arms. Here again, two balls of clay rolled out into a cylinder. And then the ends, we're just going to kind of squeeze for his paws and kind of shape into the shape of an arm and attach that to his body. And we're going to do the same thing for the other side. Now, we're going to take the needle, and here again, make some, like, claws right in here by pushing down. And I don't know if you see the kitty cat in the background. Okay, so now we've got his arms, and as you can see, he's, he's starting to come to life, and he's pretty cute. Now I'm going to take my stylus and make his belly button, just by pushing right there in the middle and pulling down a little bit. And now we'll do the carrot. Just take a piece of uh, orange clay, and starts out in a ball, and we just roll it into a long cylinder like the shape of a carrot. I think that's a little large, make it a little smaller. So here we have our carrot shape. Now I'm going to take my needle and make kind of like the little ridges that you would see in a carrot, like so. Give it a little more definition, a little more detail, like so. Then we're going to place it in his paw. And now we'll need to utilize or make the, um, the leaves, or I don't know what you call that, that comes out of the bottom of that carrot. All right, we're going to start with another ball, and we'll need the garlic press for this. So I'm sticking it inside the garlic press. And we're going to squeeze it out. Then cut it. And then you just decide how much you want to utilize for the bottom there. And I think that's a little long, so I'm going to cut that. I don't want it that long. Cut it about there. And then squeeze it at the top. And then attach it to the bottom of your carrot. And then you can just kind of 
shape it or lay it out like so. And so now you have the, basically you have your rabbit finished. Now I'm going to add some whiskers to them. Now I've got fishing line and I don't know if you can see this, but you can use fishing line for whiskers on dogs, cats, whatever. Um, the thing about fishing line is it does shrink in the oven. So you need to cut your whiskers extra long. And it also, they do straighten out too. Um, this is pretty curly. So you'll want to cut them extra long. And don't worry about how they look when you stick them in the oven. Because they will straighten and shrink. And then when they're done or your ornament is done, then you can trim them. So I've got three for each side. And I'm just going to stick them right in behind the muzzle up against his face like so I'm just going to do one side so you all can see how, how it's done and there you have it. And you can play with his ears. So there you have a cute little rabbit. And you can just uh, do some variations on this, like I said, with different colors. This could be a bear just by changing the colors, the ears, um, all sorts of things. You could put a hook in it and uh, have an actual ornament. Oh, I know what I forgot, though, his tail. <laughs> Every rabbit needs a tail, so let me show you how to do his tail. You just take a little ball of clay, and we're going to put that, attach it to his back end here. And then I like to take a toothpick and just break off a little piece of the toothpick so that it's not quite so pointy. And then we're going to you just, just keep pushing it into the clay and it will give you kind of that little cottontail effect. This also works well like um, if you were doing a dog that was a poodle or the top of a hat like a winter cap and you needed a little pom-pom on the top. So there you have his tail. And the rabbit is finished. Now all you need to do is pop them in the oven and because it's so thick, you probably need to bake this ornament at 250 for about 45 minutes. You also need to leave your ornament in the oven with the door shut when it's finished and let it cool in the oven to avoid cracking. So, um, it's ready to pop in the oven. So if you've liked this tutorial, I hope that you will subscribe to our channel on YouTube. If you have any suggestions for future tutorials or any questions concerning what we've done here today, just go to our fan page at Deb & Co. Handcrafted Ornaments and just put it in the comment box, any questions you have, and I'll be happy to answer them. So until next time, I'm Deb with Deb & Company. Bye-bye now.